Welcome to the day before Father's Day. For all you dads out there, um, happy Father's Day. And we've got Kristen here already. We're going to be talking rulers and rotary cutters today. And I'm kind of excited about that. I wish that um, someone had told me a few of the ins and outs before I had to learn them the hard way. And as always, um, pop in it with your questions onto the chat box and let us know uh, what you need and any questions that you have or um, additional thoughts uh, that you know that I may or may not have forgotten. So please uh, do that. So I would like to start with the rotary cutters today and talk a little bit about um, how they're made and my particular favorites when it comes to rotary cutters. So let me pop down to my, hi Linda, let me pop down to my cutting table <clears throat> and uh, share with you a little bit um, about the these rotary cutters. These are from Quilter Select and this one is the 60 inch and this one is the 45 inch uh, blades. And so these are the two that I'm going to be uh, pretty much talking about today and I want to show you how they're made up and some things that that make these particular cutters my favorite. Um, I had used a number of different kinds uh, over you know the years that I've been quilting and I will have to admit that the first time I picked one of these up, it surprised me. I wasn't sure I was going to um, like it, let alone love it. And then using it for a little while and giving it some time to work through um, just a difference in the, the rotary cutter, I absolutely love it. And one of the things that I love is how easy it is to change the blade um, without you know the chance of cutting yourself and that kind of stuff this little um it's i i want to make sure that you can see it on camera it's it sticks out a little bit on this side um holding on to that there's there, it's magnetic in there so it holds the blade in place first of all while you're moving it and the second thing is that when you're working to make this either a left or right handed, which is also wonderful um, to have. And if you're left handed, this is perfectly easy to use or if you're right handed. If you're, whichever way you want your blade to go, this button right here on the front, you're gonna push that button, turn it over, and this little lever right here, you can take it so it moves that way for um, lefties and this way um, for righties. And so, um, actually, the, yeah, for the right. And every once in a while when you change your blades, this is a new blade and it's it's got a little bit of oil there. You wanna keep your rotary cutter in, in good repair. So you wanna drop a little bit of oil on it from time to time. So um, that's how you change it from right to left in terms of what what type of blade um, if you're right-handed or left-handed and when you are using the rotary cutter um, to close it just tap it against that and the blade goes back and it is it's closed from that point of view now changing the blade you're going to bring it to the back take a hold of the um, on the front side, take a hold of that, come to the back side, bring this down, and the blade simply pops off. You're holding it here. You don't have to hold and grab a hold of the blade at all on this. And then you simply um, put the new blade on, put it back in place, push that lever back up, and it is back in position to use. Um, how wonderful is that? I, I love the fact that I don't really ever have to touch the blade. I can drop it in my used blade pouch and I have never touched the blade at all. So why would you need a 60 inch and a 45 inch blade? Um, simply because of how many layers 
uh, that you're cutting. This one obviously cuts a, a much easier through uh, several layers of fabric. This one, you know, two or uh, um, two layers of fabric, and anything more than that, I I tend to use my sixty. 60 inch blade for that. So as we're cutting, a couple of things that I that I want to talk about. I'm gonna grab a ruler here for a second. And when you're holding the ruler and you're measuring on fabric to cut, you wanna hold the ruler at a 45 degree angle as you are, you know, as you're cutting um, so that you're getting the accuracy uh, that you need um, in terms of, you know, the measurements that you've made in that. Um, you're going to, and you want to make sure the other thing is, is that your ruler um, or your blade of your rotary cutter is butted right up against that ruler and not away from it. And if you tend to cut something like this, um, I can see it. I know that you can't, but if you pick up your rotary cutter and you're holding it like this, you can see that it's not cut. It's the blade is not cutting right against the um, the ruler. So you want to just make sure that you're um, holding it that at that 45 degree angle. And if if feel it doesn't feel quite right, it's usually because um, the blade is you is too loose or too tight on many of the rotary cutters. But what's really nice about this is that you're not gonna have that problem um, at all on this because of the way it's built and the magnetic um, piece that's in here and the way it's put on. You're not screwing anything on, so you're not gonna be screwing it too tight or not screwing it tight enough when you put it on. And so make sure that um, cleaned, oiled, those are the, the biggies on that. And let's take a look at a piece of fabric for just a minute. And in terms of always using the right tool at, at, in the right place at the right time. And my father was a carpenter. And I know that I didn't work with him as much as, as my brothers did at all in terms of, you know, it, working with a lot of the tools, but I did help him and I learned many, many things from my father. And one of those was um, the right tool for the, the job. And so I think that's really important. And what makes this also really well, um, work really well for me, is the fact that when you pick it up, you feel the weight of it. And at first you think, oh, I don't, that's going to be too heavy. That's, that's going to um, make my hands tired, all of that. It's actually the opposite. Those are the thoughts that went through my head until I started using it. And I found out that I didn't have to have as much pressure on it because of the weight of this um, rotary cutter. And it held it much steadier. I had a lot more control than I do with the um, with some of the other ones that I've used through the years. So when I get ready to cut a piece of fabric, I'm right um, I'm right-handed, and so I want my fabric. It's going to go to the right as I cut, um, and I really don't use. In combination too often my mat as well as my um, ruler and that is simply because what I have discovered through the through the years is that the mats and the rulers don't always match up with the inch marks and so if if I am depending on both the ruler and the mat to get accuracy I'm probably not going to get it because I wondered about that for a long time and I kept working and, and trying to figure that out the only time I really use the mat for measuring is when I'm getting ready to um, square up my edge and I will put the the fabric out here and I want a straight cut um, 
And so my fabric is just a little bit over the line right here. And then comes using the right tool again. I tend to, on a half yard cut, put my fold at the top. Um, I don't know if you can see that on the camera or not. Um, and then I will fold it over again. I don't necessarily, let me bring this down a little bit. Um, I don't necessarily match these because they, they really don't need to match. I just fold it up um, and let me go back and, and re-put this on my mat. Get that lined up. And I tend to use my six by 12 ruler. The reason I do this is my arms are short and I am um, height challenged as well. And for me, when I get the longer the ruler, I almost have to stand on tippy toe and, and work it. So I've learned how to make sure that I get good straight cuts without that V that happens when, you, when you're cutting by um, making sure that I have pressed my fabric very well. Um, it is nice and flat when I get started on my fabric. Then I touch here and make sure that the fabric is not separated at my fold line down here. If it is, I'll take a, a you know a very thin um, ruler. These have about sixteenth of it or an eighth of an inch on the side, so that doesn't help me a whole lot. Or a piece of of cardboard or something um, that I will just simply take and run in the inside and make sure that everything is flat on that um, this bottom part. Then. When I use my ruler and measure, this is the, the, the one time where I will use my mat again. Because <clears throat> a couple of things that, that I learned by teaching beginners, and they were struggling with getting, you know, straight edges and squared up fabric, etc., was that they weren't seeing where the lines come and there wasn't enough room and so they were using you know a separate ruler to um, you know put on the side so that they could get the cuts they wanted etc etc or they would flip their fabric and if you're flipping your fabric before you cut it uh, it's no longer going to be um, squared up and you would have to actually re-square it so i am going to press my uh, rotary cutter um, get that open and the other thing that that I have learned um, is number one I put my inch line on the mat on an inch line and make sure that it's covered because then I know it's going to be straight on this side and I use my fingertips to uh, press down on this uh, ruler in a minute we're going to talk about this ruler and why this ruler is absolutely fabulous and then I will take my rotary cutter and instead of pushing the fabric from the end down here I am going to start in the fabric come back just to the end and then cut and I'm I'm not having to use the pressure and it's you know this this um, ruler just slides it right out and now I have this um, straight edge to work with the other thing that I want to say at this point in terms of cutting um, strips or whatever you know that you're that you're cutting if you make at least three or four cuts re-squared up uh, because with just handling it the fabric moves it, it you know it gets out of out of whack and um, then you're we're back to getting that V shaped um, strip of fabric when we come out of that so um, I absolutely adore the rotary cutter 45 degree angle 
Um, depending on um, your rotary cutter, keep it cleaned um, around when you change your blades. Uh, put a drop of oil in there to keep this um, from, you know, to keep it in good shape and last a, a heck of a long time for you. So, rotary cutters. Then I want to talk for just a minute about rulers. Um, the right tool again for the right job. And the this one, I don't have enough room in the in the camera, but this is the 24 by six inch ruler. And this is great for taking half yard cuts. And if you're not one to fold it up and you're tall, taller than I am and it's comfortable for you, um, the best thing to do is the least number of layers of fabric. Obviously, the more accuracy you're going to get. And so this six by 24 is great for cutting you know, that one fold on um, fabric. So it's, you know, 22 inches this way. And so the 24 inch ruler works really well for that. And the width is, is excellent on this, especially for beginners, because you have room to put your hand and hold your ruler in place before you um, come anywhere near the blade it's a safety thing as well. Then there's this other, um, it is a suction handle. You put that on your ruler, it's gonna hold it. You can move your ruler around and you can hold on to that as well as using your, um, using your hands. And that I find extremely helpful on, especially my squares. And then, as you know, the more um, skilled you become, then you can go to the, the smaller rulers, keeping your finger off. And this is where this suction cup really comes in handy um, to pick the um, 18 by two and a half inch ruler um, with, with the, the handle on that. Then the other, as far as the, the length of rulers, they have this ruler that is two and a half by 36 inch. And at first I'm thinking, why do I need this? Uh, and then it became very clear when I was putting on borders for cutting, squaring up long strips, cutting the, the border areas, the 36 inches, because you don't want to take your root your rotary cutter out of your fabric as you are moving you bring your thumb up and do um, I call it the spider walk and you know bring bring it that way and never remove your rotary cutter from the fabric as you're cutting and so that has been a great tool in terms of squaring up and um, sizing you know the the sizing for your borders so that in terms of length of rulers right now I want to go over to um, the chat box and see if there were any questions I I see that um, Pat says uh, you can't use any other blades in it they have to be quilter select um, I, I, you know, maybe Kristen can answer to that because I think I've used other types of blades in mine. Um, Yeah, I, I would agree that um, any any other brand of blades, I've used different ones. Um, and as far as what kind of oil in the cutter, um, just the oil that you use for your machine um, is what I use. And, 
And Kathy um, has said that she puts a weight on the outside end to help hold the ruler in place while she starts cutting. And if it, you know, as long as that weight doesn't move the ruler and it helps hold it in place, I think that's um, are are absolutely wonderful um, for that. All right. Um, so I think that you can use any blades in the that but we'll double check that and make sure that we have that absolutely correct um, but I know that in this rotary cutter I do not have a quilter select blade in it and uh, have been using it so um, anyway this um, in terms of the ruler itself I, I do want to talk a little bit about whatever this magic stuff is on the back side it is absolutely phenomenal. Other um, rulers that I have used, when I press, you know, I put them down, I can slide them back and forth. When I use the, um, this one, I, when I put it down, no, the same amount of pressure and moving it, it doesn't move on me. So whatever this magic stuff is on the back, it truly is absolutely magic and it does not move the fabric, um, does not move at all. It, it certainly doesn't move on the fabric. When you put it um, there as well, it, it grips. And for me, that was a life changer. I thought I was very good at moving the... Um, or not moving, but cutting with, you know, I was very good at cutting and I was pretty accurate. And then I started using these and found out that I could become even more accurate in terms of the, um, the ruler itself. And again, these rulers are also made for left and right handed. Um, if you notice on going in one direction, you have your numbers in the dark square, one, two, three, four, um, on this five inch square. And then in the open box, you have one, two, three, four, um, going in the opposite direction. So whichever, you know, whichever you are left-handed or right-handed, you've got the numbers going, um, in the correct direction for whether you're right or left-handed. The other thing that is really nice about, um, these particular rulers for me is that I would find sometimes I would be just going along and start thinking of other things and and whatever and I would miss whether I was on the half mark or the quarter inch mark or whatever on a ruler and this one has a broken line for the half inch and the solid for the inch then this is divided into eighths and so you have a small you know, your smallest line is your eighth, then you have a longer line for your quarter, and you have a smaller one again for your three eighths, the broken line for your half inch, uh, small, large, and small again for your eighth inches and quarter inches. And the other um, plus for me personally is that these lines are very dark first of all, and I know that sounds strange, but I didn't always find that be, to be true, that the lines were as deep a color of black as they are on these rulers, and they're very thin. So they're easily seen, and when I put them up against the fabric, and I put that right against the edge of my fabric on there, and this is black, here on the fabric but yet this black is easily seen on top of this black because it is um, a very dark um, color in in terms of this and so when I put that line right at the edge of my fabric and I have measured this multiple times and shared that with my students in my classes we, I get accuracy. When, I, when I'm when i cutting an inch or a two inch strip, I get two inches. I get one and a half. I get, 
you know, whatever size of strip that I'm cutting. And then especially when you go to the half, when that, the, that line is right there, I've got it. I, I don't have to worry that much about the accuracy. And the other good thing is, is it doesn't slip when I bring my rotary cutter and I put that on there. All right. And basically, I noticed several people mentioned I've always put it at the 90 degree, degree angle. I did know it was 45. Um, you know, I'm not a, a, a terribly um, excellent math student, um, but it's it's held up straight so that your blade is right against the blade. Um, and if that's 90 degrees, 45 degrees, I, I, I think I was told once it was 45 and I just believed, um, but it's basically when the blade comes up straight and you're holding your blade straight, you're not angling it and you're not angling it in or out. You're holding it straight against that blade. So it, um, positions itself next to that. So I do not use the mat here. This is your tool of choice when you're cutting, is the ruler. So it doesn't matter, you know, how your fabric is laying here, what's ever comfortable for you. Sometimes um, at an angle, when I'm cutting strips, is more comfortable for me than straight on because I'm using my tool that's correct for, for cutting um, on my fabric. And I can drop, you know, that, and this is no longer um, a straight edge because I've been messing and playing and moving my fabric, and so it's no longer straight. But again, these lines are thin. They're, they're, you can see them quite well, and I am kind of going blind, and they're still very, uh, very dark, I can see them. So a variety of squares, using different squares for different things. When I'm doing miniature quilts and I have very small um, blocks or half square triangles to square up or clean up, uh, this two and a half inch is absolutely fabulous, especially for those mini, those mini quilts and mini blocks that I do. The, the bigger it is, the more opportunity to, to you have to um, lose that accuracy because it becomes awkward the bigger the fabric is for what you're working with. So again, you know, small blocks all the way up to squaring up with the 12 and a half, you know, the 15 inch uh, squares. And the other nice thing about the Quilter Select is that they come in both straight five inch square, but you can also get a five and a half. A two inch square, or you can get two and a half. Same thing on these um, rulers. This one is six by 12. You can get them six and a half by 12 and a half. So whichever is a preference um, for you would be the, the preference that you would go for in terms of the ruler and that accuracy because I'm kind of really about that because the blocks go together far easier. And then I wanna share with you just because this size, the 45 degree, when I am trying to cut around for applique, gets very difficult. Um, I will go back to a scissors, which is just fine, but sometimes I want to get into small spaces and um, Quilter Select doesn't have it yet, um, I'm, I'm can't wait till they do because I think, you know, their weighted uh, will, will be helpful to get into those small corners and working with those small pieces in terms of cutting it. And this works really nice. And then I found this one and um, it, this one is by Fiskars and it's got a top on it and the blade is out. And the way this one works is you put your finger in here and it becomes like a, a, a drawing pencil. 
and around my applique pieces and stuff, I feel I have some good control of that with my rotary cutter. But again, that blade is pretty exposed there and, um, and it's very lightweight. So it, that there's some wobble there and I have to work really, you know, to hard to get that around. But I find this one to be really good for me when I'm cutting around applique uh, pieces for, um, you know, to get into those small spaces and stuff. So there's, there's a couple of options uh, for you there and putting, well, if I put it on the right way, so that's, that's a couple of options um, for you in terms of that. I hope this is somewhat helpful to you. Let me just check and, and see where. Um, and somebody, uh, Bonnie has asked where you put the drop of oil. Um, when the blade comes uh, off of there, and you pull that out, you can drop a, a little drop of oil right around there and then your blade isn't going to, um, and then it'll get that little bit of oil that goes around there then will be inside of here. And just each time, again, make sure that you are wiping this down, cleaning this off, drop your piece of oil in there, put the new blade on, um, put it in here, um, the mag, you know, the, the magnet that's in there um, holds that blade in place, uh, makes it really easy to get that off. So, and uh, let's see. And yes, I agree. I'm biased too. Quilter Select uh, really is by far, uh, and I wouldn't have said that the first day that I used it. So none. that non-slip coating, I don't know what that miracle coating is, but it works great. And I, people are agreeing on here. And someone else, the, the dark lines. Yeah, I was slowly buying them all. It, it, you know, I have, as I buy a new one, uh, my old ones really go away because I find that I'm not using them at all. Using it all the time. And Kathy, you ask, which do you prefer the ruler added half inch or not? I prefer not having it. And the reason being is they, you know, they only put the half inch on, you know, two sides of the ruler. And when you're, you're working with the two sides, sometimes I'll just pick up the ruler and go before I realize that I have, you know, the hat, the extra half inch on the wrong side and I mess up and that's a personal thing. Um, other people really like it because when you're squaring up a block that extra half inch works really well and so on my 12 inch ruler uh, square because a lot of the blocks are 12 inch I um, so I do have a 12 and a half inch square there but on everything else I I do not have the half an inch and that's just you know those are personal preferences um, so I am glad to see that many of you agree with me on that we wanted to share um, some of these products with you and why we love them so it's the weight it's the way the blade is changed, never having to touch it and not, you know, getting it too tight or too loose for me is a game changer because uh, there were times when uh, you could get the blade on wrong and the, the other pieces in there and it would get too tight and the blade would turn slightly outward. If it was too loose, it would wobble. 
Um, I don't have, I don't even have to think about it anymore. And it wasn't um, until I was reading someone else's comments um, on another website about the wobbly ruler and how to uh, adjust for that, that it, it reminded me that I don't have to do that here. And the weight of it has released the pressure in my wrist and my hand. I don't, I don't have, I don't get tired as quickly um, when I use these rulers because I'm finding I'm not having to push as hard and the weight has become now um, a necessity for me. So I, I love, love, love that. I love the lines on these, on these rulers. I love this miracle, um, whatever that is that they put on the back of that ruler that holds it in place is phenomenal. The lines are easily seen and the, the yellow color, uh, kind of yellow, does not change how you see the fabric underneath. I don't know why that is, but it is and that works really great for me. So those are those are really the highlights of this and you know the cutting accuracy that rulers and mats don't always line up all the way across and so the mat is really the mat is there to protect your rotary cutting blade and I can tell you that there is a difference between the Quilter Select mat and using other mats that this works really well with uh, these rulers and um, the rotary cutter and how it how it works with you know cuts into the mat um, I love it and the other great thing about this mat is that it has a light side and a dark side so you can flip it over depending on if you're cutting light fabric or dark fabric and I do that quite often um, with the quilter select mats so both sides are gridded but this side is a light gray the other side is a darker gray for lighter fabrics again helping that whole sight and vision experience that you have with your um, cutting and and getting the accuracy that you want in your work and I, I do hope that the things that, that I talked about today um, are helpful to you. I wish I had known that because I was, when I first started out with rotary cutters and, you know, mats and things, I didn't realize that the mat and the rulers didn't always necessarily match up. And I was trying to be as accurate as I could, uh, but I wasn't getting there. And, and it was through trial and error, uh, teaching people who ask the questions and I wanted to be able to answer them, that I learned you know, a couple of these things. Um, you might have learned them from another teacher. You may have read it somewhere. Um, I hadn't, and so for a long time, I didn't do that. And some of the rulers that I had used in the past were, were good. Um, but others, the lines were too big, and sometimes when I cut a one-inch strip, I would get one and a little bit more. And when you add that up across 20 seams on a quilt, um, that little bit more becomes um, inches in terms of that. And um, we're going to, over the next few weeks, I'm going to look and make sure that no one else... Um, Deborah, you said, I just bought the 45 and it's not cutting through my single fold fabric in every, um, every few inches. I, my guess is that you somehow got a nick, um, in your rotary cut, rotary cutter blade because when it does that every few inches, it's usually a nick in the blade. And that can happen if you, if you hit the side of your ruler, um, you know, as you're moving it across the table and it hits something else. So I would change the blade and try again in terms of that. Um, um, Cindy, I, I want to answer the question. The only thing I've been disappointed with the Quilter Select rulers is the edge of the coating on the back rubs off with lots of use. Actually, um, I checked into that because I thought exactly um, the same thing and the reason that you know that it rubs off is because of the little bit of color on there. 
but all of the rulers um, have a tendency to do that, and it still um, has some of the stick. It's the it's the color that's moving off of that, and uh, it doesn't change how well it adheres to your fabric. Um, and as with anything, over time, if it all goes away, then you know that that changes things. But um, that is because of the yellow color that you see that wear on there, um, where you don't on other rulers with clear or that does not have that um, on the back side. So um, I was very much disappointed with that um, until I ask a representative at a quilt show um, why that happened and how I could avoid that. And um, I don't know that that's all that she told me, but that's what I remember and not that I didn't have to worry about it um, with that. All right. You know, these are great that you're putting up the rulers and the sizes that you would like. I know that Kristen will pass that on to Quilter Select, and who knows, maybe soon in the future you'll also have that. And um, yes, you can tap the the rotary cutter open or um, or shut. Let me let me go back down to the table and make sure that you saw me um, do that. When you are getting ready to sew, simply push that, tap it, and your blade is out. You can cut, and then when you've you finish cutting, um, just tap it back, and um, that is how that. So sometimes on the you see me tapping. Um, that's what I'm doing. I'm putting the blade back. So if I you know moving my hands, I don't cut myself. In terms of that so thank you for mentioning that all right um, Peggy I have not heard of the grippy spray I'll try to find out um, the local quilter select that works great to repair the ruler good to know I did not know that so thank you for adding that to that And also sometimes skipping on the cuts could be a sliced mat, and that is true. And which brings up um, something that I should share with you, and that is taking care of your, your cutting mat. And this quilter select or whatever, it needs to be conditioned and cleaned from time to time. And the way that I clean mine and it works really great and keeps it um, from becoming brittle and that self-healing works so much better. Um, about once a year, I will put um, in my bathtub warm water with Dawn, the, the blue Dawn dish soap because it's nice and gentle. And I'll use a soft um, scrub brush and I will scrub my mat really clean and get all the oils and you know that from your hands from the rotary cutters whatever it is get all of that off of that and I'll let it soak for a little while and then I will take it and I lay it on um, sheets or uh, low pile towels and let it dry completely nice and flat you want to you want to keep your your cutter flat and you don't want to put it back on your cutting table if there's any moisture at all so make sure that it is um, completely dry and um, then i wipe it down with a you know a cloth and make sure that it's that it's good and, and good and dry and that moisturizes and keeps it clean and in between uh, i i don't have it out today um, I moved again. <laughs> we, we moved into a more permanent um, place. And as you can see, the, the scene behind me is pretty bare and uh, working on that. So I don't have the little brush, but I bought a vegetable brush. And when I am done cutting for the day, I will run that brush over my mat so that I can pick up any little stray threads or anything that got into the mat and with the self-healing. And so if you're noticing... Um, cuts in your in your mat it's probably time to clean it 
uh, run a you know a soft brush over it, or um, condition it with with water and gentle soap. Um, And that is exactly why Kathy, had, I put the blade up the side of the ruler about an inch so I don't catch the corner of the ruler. And I, I do the same thing. I come back and that also keeps the end of my fabric straight. And I'm not getting, you know, that curve at the, at the beginning or uh, that can sometimes happen. And then I come back and then go forward. Um, Will Quilter Select ever have a larger mat? I have no idea. Um, I'm really, uh, I, I have no idea. <laughs> and I would say the next time you're at a show, um, check with your, uh, you know, the Quilter Select uh, dealers. Let them know what you want and what you need. And um, that's the best way. Um, and I see that Kristen says, I know they're thinking about it. Uh, they did briefly offer a very large mat, but it's not available right now is what she's saying. So, um, and Cindy mentioned again, there's cutting mat cleaner scrubbies, scrubbies that work well to remove the threads and fuzz. And yes, there are, um, those are on the market. I just bought a soft, um, brush, because I don't always, those materials are not always available at the local quilt store. And I don't buy a ton of stuff online. Um, so that's just, that's just me. And so the, those are available for cleaning your mat and removing the threads. But um, do condition your mat from time to time. Um, and I do it about once a year. So that is what I have on rulers and the rotary cutters for uh, getting some accuracy and why um, really in my quilt room I carry only um, quilter select rulers and the, I only use the quilter select rotary cutters right now except for those two little ones when I'm doing very close tight work uh, and I waiting for quilter select to make um, a tiny uh, cutter so that um, that even helps with that there. So that um, is wonderful. And over the next few weeks, we're going to be doing some fun projects with um, different um, tools. We're going to we're going to be making a needle case, a fun one, a little bit artsy on that um, stitching thread embellishment, that kind of thing with that. We're going to be working with a gel plate and why you would want to if you're a quilter and how it works and what kind of fun you can have with that. Just uh, just some fun projects. And then in um, later part of August, early September, we will um, start on our next large quilt project um, type of block of the month and I can't wait for you to be introduced to our new project to the new quilt because I think it's absolutely stunning and lots of techniques to to learn so I hope you'll join um, again next week and we'll see you then and we'll do something fun for that so have a great week and we'll see you next time Bye-bye.